Hey, sixth graders. Today we're going to practice lesson four again, finding the surface area of triangular prisms. So let's do a couple practice ones. I want you to join along with me on this. And uh, just to remind us how to do these problems, and then we'll do a couple right out of your work as well. Remember, the surface area means all the sides combined, the area of all the sides. So we want to make a list, right, of all the different sides. We've got a front triangle, right? We've got a back triangle, we've got a left side, a right side, and we've got a bottom. I always like to use BOT for bottom so I don't mix it up with back. All right, the area of a triangle is the base times the height divided by 2. Notice our triangle has a base of 6 and a height of 5.2. So let's do 5.2 times 6 to get the area of that triangle. 6 times 2 is 12, right? 6 times 5 is 30, plus 1 more is 31. One decimal place. Okay, now we have to divide that by 2, right? So 31.2 divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 once. Here comes our 1. 5 times 2 is 10. Here comes our 2. And 6 times 2 is 12. So the front and back triangles, remember to line up your decimal places carefully, right? Because when you're adding decimals, you just drop the decimal place right down. It's important to add them up. All right, now let's get the left and right side. So again, if I go to my red pen here, the left and right are like these two rectangles that are leaning. This is the right side right here, and the left side's exactly the same. So I'll go like this to remind me that those are exactly the same. So notice we have a base of 14 and a height of 6. Let's do that. 14 times 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 1 is 6, 7, 8. So notice the left and right of, of an area of 84. So let's line up our decimals again, just like this, right? Now that bottom piece, I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way so it's not quite so messy over here. But notice the bottom piece is a big rectangle. Do you see it? Highlighted in green here. See this big bottom rectangle? We've got a base of 6 and a height of 14. So 14 times 6, notice, is the same as what we just did before. So the bottom must also be 84. So now if I add those all up, okay, I've got to drop my decimal place straight down. 6 plus 6 gives me 12. Carry the 1. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 1 more is 11, plus 4 more is 15, plus 4 more is 19, plus 4 more is 23. Okay, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 1 more is 4, plus 8 is 12, plus 8 is 20, plus 8 more is 28. So there we go. There's our surface area. Don't forget your label. It's squared, right, because we're talking area today. And there's the surface area of that triangular prism. Okay, let's do one more example together. Um, that's going to be kind of like ones from your assignment today, and then we'll do a couple right out of your assignment. So here we go. Here's another triangular prism. Notice it has a front and back triangle. They're going to be the same. It has a left and a right side again. Those will be the same. It's like the sides of the tent. And then it has a bottom. Okay, so again, make your list. Don't forget to line up your decimals as you go. All right, front and back. Notice here's the front, right? The front triangle. Okay, base. Careful, times height. We don't want to use that 5. That's the slanted side there. We want to use this right here. That's the height, right? So we're going to do 4.3 times 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21. Now, here's a little trick that I hadn't taught you yet on purpose because I wanted to teach you how to do it the, the right way first before I teach you a trick. I actually don't have to divide this by 2. Do you know why? Because both the triangles together equal 21.5, right? If I divided that by 2, I get half of that, but then wouldn't I just take that plus itself again to get this other triangle? So what you can do for your triangles from now on is just say both of them are 21.5, okay? Because otherwise you're going to just multiply your answer times 2 anyways, right? When you divide it by 2 and then take it times 2 again, you're going to end up with the same thing, right? So we're going to say both the front and back triangles are 21.5. Now if I wanted to, I'll just show you what I mean by that. I could have divided that by 2, right? 1 goes into 2, 2 goes into 2 once, right? comes our 1, it goes in 0 times, and then it goes in uh, 7 times, and then it goes in 5 times. Notice I get 10.75, and 10.75 times 2 is 21.5. You see why it doesn't really make sense to divide by 2? Okay. Now I could have said the front is 10.75 and the back is 10.75, and then I would have added them together to get 21.5, right? So in other words, when you do your triangle, since there's two that are the same, you can skip the step of dividing by 2. If that doesn't make sense, just do it the normal way, but that's a little shortcut. Let's do the left and right side. Notice the left and right side, I'll use blue this time, are, are rectangles. See that? Here's the right side. So we're going to have the base of 12 and the height of 5. 
12 times 5 is 60. Some of you probably know that by heart like I do. Okay, so we'll put 60 for both of those. And then the bottom, notice, is also a big rectangle. If I would trace it, it would look like that, right? So that's 12 times 5 also, which is also going to be 60. So remember, drop your decimal down. When you're adding decimals, the decimal just drops down. You've got 5 plus nothing, 1 plus nothing. 2 plus 6 is 8, plus 6 more is 14, plus 6 more is 20, right? So there we are, 201.5 inches squared. Okay, let's do a couple out of your work. You're going to notice this is number 4 right out of your work today, so have out your sheet and do this work right along with me. Notice we've got a triangular prism that has a front and back triangle. Now remember, I'm not going to divide that triangle by 2 because there are two triangles that are the same size. So I'll just let the answer that I get base times height be what stands for both my triangles. So I'll go like that to remind us of that. It's got a left and right rectangle, right? The sides of the tent, and then it's got a bottom. So let's do this. Let's find the area of the triangle. Base, right, times height of my triangle. So the base is 15.6. The height is 10.4. Okay, so let's multiply those two together. Join with me. If I go too fast, you can always pause the video, right? 6 times 4 is 24. 4 times 5 is 20, 21, 22. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. Add a 0. Just going to get all zeros for this one, right? Let's add two zeros then for the last row. 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 1 is 1. So we add these together. Hopefully you can still kind of see that. I know it's kind of blocked by the next one below it, but we'll, we'll make it work. I'll go red so it really stands out. 4 plus 0 plus 0 is 4. 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 2. 6 plus 6 is 12, carry the 1, 5 plus 1 is 6, and 1 plus nothing is nothing. Now remember, we need two decimal places, right? Because this one had one decimal place, and this one had one decimal place. So I'm going to put it right there. So now normally I'd divide by 2, but since I have two triangles that are the same size, let's just skip that step, let's do that little trick I taught you, and put it down like this. That's the area of both the triangles combined. If I had divided by 2, I would have gotten like 81.12, right? Uh, so instead of that, I'm just going to Leave them like that, and that stands for both the triangles together. That's both these triangles. Since I didn't divide by 2, that stands for both, okay? All right, let's do the left and right side. Notice the left and right side are rectangles. We've got a base right here, 15.6, and we've got a height right here, which is 13, right? So 15.6 times 13. Let's do that in green right here. Don't have to line up the decimals because we're multiplying, right? We'll just count the decimals at the end. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 more is 16. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 more is 4. Extra 0, this is going to go fast, right? 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 1 is 1. We add those up, we get 8. 6 plus 6 is 12. Carry the 1. 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 1 more is 10, right? 1 plus 1 is 2. Then we have one decimal place only on this one, right? So careful to line up your decimal places. What I would do is put your decimal place there first this number right after it in 202.8 and now remember you could add an extra zero there the, the left side is going to be the exact same size so we'll put that twice the left and the right okay sorry that's the left and the right I guess I'm kind of off of my uh, my letters on the left side here but you get it here's the front and back the left and the right side okay notice the bottom of our shape is just one big rectangle see that if I highlight it like that there we go so let's find that area. We've got a base of 15.6 and a height of 15.6. So it actually is a square, even though it looks like a rectangle from this angle, doesn't it? So 15.6 times 15.6. Okay, here we go. 6 times 6 is 36. Do this right along with me. Just pause me if I go too fast, okay? 6 times 5 is 30, plus 3 more is 33. 6 times 1 is 6, 7, 8, 9, right? Put our extra 0. Erase our carried numbers so that we don't get confused by those. There they go. All right, we're back at it. 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 3. 5 times 5 is 25. 26, 27, 28. 5 times 1 is 5, 6, 7. Now we need two extra zeros, right, because we're moving on to the third column. And then this is an easy one. Just 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 1 is 1. So we'll stack those up, and let's add them together. Here we go. 6, 3, 9 plus 8 is 17. Plus 6 more is 23. Carry the 2. We have 9. 7 plus 2 is 9. Plus 5 is 14. Right? And then 1 plus 1 is 2. Now we need two decimal places because we're multiplying. And this one has one decimal place. And that one has one decimal place. So we'll put it right there. So we get 
point three six. And now we've got all five of our sides, right? We did our two triangles at the beginning. We didn't divide by two because we were getting both the triangles at the same time. We did the left and the right, and we did the bottom. Okay, let's add them up. Six plus four gives us 10. Carry the one. One plus two gives us three, plus eight is 11, plus eight more is 19, 21, 22, 23. Or, excuse me, 19 plus 3 is 22. There we go. Bring our desk carried number up. You can drop your decimal right down just like I did there. 2 uh, plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. That's 8, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11. Carry the 1. 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 1 more is 11. Carry the 1. Now we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? The 1 and 1 make 2, so we get 8 again. So we get 811.2 for that one total. And then don't forget your label, meters squared will be your label when you're all said and done. All right, we'll also do number five together. Okay, so let's make a list of all the sides that number five has. Do you see how it has a front and back triangle? Remember, we won't divide by two. We'll use our little trick. Normally, we divide by two and then use that side two times, but let's just leave it because then it'll stand for both, right? So I'll go like this to remind us of that. Do you see it has like these top rectangles? It's got a rectangle right here. You see me outlining it there. And has another rectangle kind of on top, like here, almost like a roof, right? Let's call it the top left and the top right. You can kind of make up your own little um, little symbols for that. And then notice it's got a bottom, right? If I outline it, it's got this bottom rectangle that's really big on the bottom, right? Um, and so we'll call that our BOT, our bottom, like we always do. All right, let's find all those different sides. Let's start with the front and back. Let's do the triangle first. All right, the front triangle has a, a base of 12.75, see that? And then a height of three. So let's take 12.75 times three. Here we go. Three times five is 15. Three times seven is 21, plus one more is 22. Three times two is six, seven, eight, and three times one is three. Now we should have two decimal places, right? Right here should be our decimal place. And now normally I divide by two, right? But I'm going to have this answer stand for both of the triangles put together. Okay, because otherwise if I divided by two and then added them together again, I'd still end up with this. I have two triangles, right? So the front and the back triangles together <clears throat> are 38.25. Now let's do the top left shape. Notice the top left has a base of this right here. That's 1.25 because it's the same as that across the way, right? And then it's got a height going this way of 9.25. Okay, so let's do that. 9.25 times 1.25. It's just a rectangle, so base times height, right? All right, join with me on this one. Show your work. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 is 10, 11, 12. 5 times 9 is 45, plus 1 more is 46. We put an extra 0. Let's erase our carried numbers so we don't get confused by them. All right, here we go. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 more is 5, and 2 times 9 is 18. We put two extra zeros this time. 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 9 is 9. So we add those all together, and we should get 5, 2, 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 5 more is 16. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 8 is 13, 14, 15. Okay, and 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 1 more is 11. Now remember, we should have four decimal places on this one. Because that one has two, and that one has two. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we end up with 11. You get to line up your decimals. Point five, six, two, five. Ooh, that's a big decimal. Okay, now let's do the top right rectangle. Do you see it? It's kind of like the right part of the roof. If you can think of this almost like a house. Right, so notice we have a rectangle, and we have a base right here of 1.25, and we have a height of 5. So let's do 1.25 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, 11, 12, right? 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 more is 6. Two decimal places. Sorry, it should be right there. Okay, 6.25. Now careful to line up these decimals really carefully. Okay, so we'll put your decimal down first. All right, now the bottom. Notice the bottom is this big rectangle way down here. It has a base of 12.75 and a height of 1.25. So here we go. 12.75 times 1.25. We're going to have four decimal places again. 5 times 5 is 25. 
5 times 7 is 35, 36, 37. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 more is 13. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 more is 6. Let's erase our carried numbers. So they're out of the way. And let's move on to the next row with an extra 0. Here we go. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14. 15. Carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. And we're going to add two extra zeros. And then this last column is easy. It's just 1 times everything. So 5, 7, 2, 1. Let's add these up carefully. 5 in the first column. 7 in the second column. 3 plus 5 gives us 8. Plus 5 more is 13. Carry the 1. 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 1 more is 12, plus 7 is 19. 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5, and then 1. Now remember, we have four decimal places again, so our decimal goes here. So let's line up our decimals again. We should have 15.9375. All right, let's add up all of our sides here. Here we go. Remember, when you're adding, your decimal just drops down. Let's fill in some of these extra zeros just to make this easy for us. All right, first column, 5 plus 5 is 10, right? Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 7 is 10. Carry the 1. 6 plus 6 is 12, because that first 5 and 1 makes 6. Plus 5 is 17, plus 3 more is 20. Carry the 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 5 more is 9. 10, 11, and then 20. Carry the 2. Uh, 2 times, plus 8 is 10. Plus 1 more is 11, plus 6 is 17, plus 5 is 22, carry the 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 1 more is 7. So notice all of our decimal places turn to zeros, that's kind of cool. So there's our final answer, so we'll rewrite it right here, 72 inches squared. Okay, hopefully that gets you off to a good start on a couple on the worksheet. Don't forget to make your lists like we did of all the different sides first, and then be very careful as you line up those decimal places too. I would put all the decimal places down first. Those are probably the trickiest things about our lesson today. Otherwise, guys, I think you're going to do just fine. Let me know if you have any questions, though. Don't be afraid to reach out.